Let's talk about what's happening right now uh, in, in, uh, uh, with Americans and how they're dealing with being able to get access to these different markets right now around the world. Okay. Well, the United States is sanctioning you if you are a U.S. citizen. You may not have known this. The Treasury Department has issued new guidelines saying that you are not allowed to make certain investments in Russian bonds, and they are working on rules that would prohibit Americans from making investments in China. But this is America, you might say. We want, you know, to be free. This is our money. We're free to do that. You're not, actually. When it comes to your money, there are many things you cannot do and many ways that the U.S. keeps tabs on your money overseas. Those days of an unmarked Swiss bank account are long gone. So last week, the Biden administration issued new restrictions on Americans buying Russian stocks and bonds. A Treasury spokesperson said that this was, quote, consistent with our goal to deny Russia financial resources it needs to continue its brutal war against Ukraine. Treasury has made clear the U.S. persons are prohibited from making new investments in the success of Russia, including through purchases on the secondary market. So previously, you were only allowed to trade these bonds on the secondary market, but now the United States wants to dig those investors out too and say basically nothing for you, right? But look at the Russian stock market, which is called the Moscow Exchange. Now, uh, can we zoom into this graphic? I'm sorry, it's it's a bit... So if you look at this, this is a, a one-year dip. So if you or a one year chart. So see how previous to the invasion in March, it was doing just fine, March invasion, big dip. But since then, quite the recovery and stability, right? Just today, the Moscow exchange was up 4% on a day when the American economy was dipping into bear market. That's a 20% decline, right? And so it could, seems to be stabilizing the United States government does not want to give you the opportunity to get in on that, that game, period. Well, now Congress wants to put a screening process on American businesses that do business in China. According to the Wall Street Journal, uh, this measure is part of broader legislation to bolster U.S. competitiveness with China, and it would require American companies and investors to disclose certain new outbound investments and authorize the executive branch to form a new intra-agency panel to review and block investments on national security grounds. So you may remember this was, you know, Donald Trump was big on this too, right? He really didn't like the idea that TikTok had so much power and was Chinese owned. Uh, this sort of furthers that. And there is bipartisan support on this. So the a draft of the bill was reviewed by the Wall Street Journal on Monday. Now, I want to remind you, we are in a Cold War with China over currency. The United States wants to maintain its power as the world's exchange currency. China wants to take that, right? The United States has a lot of debt, doesn't have enough money to actually support all business in the world. China is saying we can, right? Whether that's true or not, I, I'm not a Chinese economy economist, uh, but Secretary of State, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken says that this move, this now new screening of Chinese investments will avoid a Cold War, but I can't quite work that out. I, I Well, it'll avoid a Cold War. So we will put more restrictions on Chinese investments. Right. But this won't exacerbate the cold war that we are currently in with china i don't see how that could be the case now the wall street journal points out that the u.s has for decades regulated foreign investments in u.s entities which is true right you may not know this because i think most people don't just say like oh how can i invest in switzerland or whatever right this is like upper echelon of investors who even care about investing in other places uh but um, this, so even though that is the case, right, this is a new sort of broader bill. The new bill expands the federal government's purview over Americans' investment activities overseas. So you could say, and maybe I just will say it, that it's a power grab, 
right? This is expanding. So many, many people who live any kind of in, in international lives feel like when Obama put FATCA, which was a requirement for Americans living overseas to report all assets to the U.S. government, that that was a humongous power grab. I 1000% agree, but we're going to put that aside for a second. But for the American government now to use conflict to give itself more power over where invest Americans can invest is very concerning to me, right? This has been ratcheting up for years. America behaves like a jealous ex-boyfriend when it comes to American money and American dollars overseas. It's very every move you make. Mm. Um, and so I feel concerned over this giving the American government more power under the, go the under the excuse of it's wartime, right? And so, uh, <laughs> this is I mean, but this is all they do. This is what the American. I mean, we just watched the other night, just as an example. I mean, it's an anecdotal example, but of course, watching the movie Vice, starring Christian Bale as Dick Cheney. Uh, what's his name who played George Bush? Um, I don't know that actor's name. Uh, off the top of my head. Anyone in the chat, let me know. Um, but, you know, you see how you could, they're, you know, consolidating American power. They're never going to relinquish the power. Right? Yes, you, you, no, they you, never you, do you that. You take power and you, you don't relinquish it. You build more power. You expand the executive branch. You make it as powerful as possible, as Dick Cheney planned to do you right. know, under George W. Bush. So you, you don't roll this power back. Anytime they can consolidate power and take more of it, they're going to. And it's funny to watch like the Western media talking heads, by the way. So Jim Cramer on CNBC. Um, I, I don't know, the mouthpiece of, of Washington, et cetera. But watch Jim Cramer, his take on how this whole China move is playing out. Take a listen. Hey, Jim, we're looking, by the way, at uh, Didi. I don't know if you saw this, up over 50% today. Uh, you should see that flow through at least marginally to, to Uber, which, of course, has actually moved uh, nicely this week or last week, but on a relative basis to, to where it had been, maybe not. Um, do, do you, do you, what do you expect there? Well, look, I think that the PR, People's Republic of China, the government periodically tries to suck us in. Uh, they always succeed. There'll be some people who come on our air. People have lost your money consistently, and they'll be back saying, you know what, the market you want to be in is China. They have no idea how the Chinese Communist government l likes to manipulate the stocks to get us in, get our capital, probably do some deals, and then say, <laughs> Um, America, you don't know how we work. And, and it just seems to happen regularly. Uh, it's a very ill-advised strategy, but it just... these The people who uh, insist on investing in that area, you've got to take your money away from them because they're fools. Okay. I can't so I just quite wanna, work wait, out wait, that logic. Well, I just want to unpack this a little bit. So this idea that China is perverting the currency or China is perverting the stock market to get you to come in, let me tell you something. OK, all you need to do is watch any day trader, ask any day trader, you know, who perverts the markets. And it's I mean, it's absolutely Wall Street. You so, only have to have been alive in 2007, 2008 to have observed. Right. Perversion the United of States is the war is the biggest per, uh, perverter of currency in the world. We're literally 30 trillion dollars in debt and we want to lecture other people about where they can put their money. By the way, I saw this afternoon, I didn't have time to put it in, but did you know overnight they opened up the new land bridge between China and Russia? They did a whole celebration ceremony. No, I did not. So there was balloons and everything, and they opened up a new trade route between China and Russia. It's a much fanfare, and, you know, again, showing you, and by the way, uh, India now, the second biggest importer of Russian oil uh, for the first time. So, again, they're doing fine without us. We, but uh, but my concern about this, right, is that it will be used as an excuse to continue to preclude Americans from investing in other economies that are not suffering the same, right? Um, and th that it will never be allowed again, right? And that it will continue to expand. And you're right, those these kind of powers, it, it doesn't have to be that you can't invest in Russia right now, 
right? Will we get that power back if Russia becomes an ally? Who knows, right? But the, the government is going to continue to use this to look at your foreign and, and, and I mean, ask any tax accountant who prepares taxes for anyone who lives overseas. It's a nightmare. And it will continue to be if the government decides that now it screens investments from China, it precludes investments from Russia. Uh, this is just something that will continue to reach into people. It, and I mean, and it, I don't know. I, you know, I struggle with like how much does this matter? Do people really live international lives with family overseas and, and that kind of thing? And I think that a lot of people do. And I think that these rules will be dangerous. Well, I just love that they're going to lecture us about where to put our money when you are lying to our faces about what's going on in a war in Ukraine. You're literally lying to us. You're lying to us about what's happening in China. You're lying to us what's happening in Russia. You're lying to us what's happening in Ukraine. You're lying to us what's happening in Syria. You're lying to us what's happening in Somalia. The list goes on and on and on. So you are literally lying to us and you're gonna tell us what to do with our money. When you do ends around with, your, with our taxpayer dollars and funnel billions of dollars into these zones and then you tell us we can't invest, well, that's yes, the most hilarious part to me. For people who actually study economics and study investing like us, Right. We have made it our goal to move as much money outside of the American dollar and American investments um, as possible because we are afraid of what is coming for a nation that's saddled with debt. And this inflation is something that many predicted. Right. And so it's painful, but it's not necessarily surprising. And so if the government sees that more and more people are coming to this realization and thinking, I'm not going to invest here. This place is a dumpster fire and then sets laws that makes it so that you cannot diversify. Uh, that is terrifying. We, you know, we went to an investor conference in Serbia where someone who was trying to invest overseas and there were certain banks in certain countries that said, no, we don't work with Americans because of FATCA requirements, because of the well, look IRS at, is, look at is a Gestapo. Right. And so what the guy had been, he said, I was trying to just like diversify into different countries. And I realized I live in a financial concentration camp because I cannot get out. Hmm. Right. This is it, because he is only allowed to play by the rules of the IRS, even if he's not living inside America. And so these types of things will continue to close us in. Um, and they scare me. Well, and I think crypto too. I mean, look at look at crypto. You know, like if you want to invest in crypto and if you want to be involved in taking care of your own money in that way, there's so many crypto companies and exchanges that are like, we're not doing business in the United States. Why would we? Why? Yeah. Would, why? There's no reason for us to do it. Right. I mean, we could tap into that market. Yeah, that's fine. You know what? Those people want to do it. They're going to figure out creative ways to invest outside of the United States. Uh, and that's the that's the sad reality. Um, but you know, the United States is digging its own grave. You're watching it in real time, guys. You're watching it unfold in real time. I talk to Americans, very, very, very intelligent um, Americans in different levels of, of government and the military and, and, and the media, and they're just shaking their heads. They're like, I've never seen it like this, and it's it's getting it's getting worse. Thank you so much for subscribing to our channel. You know, we've been banned, we've been blocked, we've been censored. That's why we started our own website to stay connected with you for free. That's right. So head on over to redacted.inc and make sure you're connected with us. You can sign up again at redacted.inc, not .com.